Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we'll be speaking with Professor Eric Eisencraft. He's joining us here as VP of Clinical and Regulation at BioBeat. Now, BioBeat's a digital tech company developing its proprietary data collection tools for remote patient monitoring, or RPM. We're going to talk about the company's wrist monitor and the chest monitor, both FDA cleared to monitor stroke volume and cardiac output, in addition to its previous clearance in monitoring cuffless blood pressure, blood oxygen saturation, and more. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Professor Eisencraft. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, I did, of course, mention your position there at BioBeat. Uh, Give us a brief look into your professional background and tell us exactly what BioBeat is involved in. So I'm a pediatrician and I'm also a professor in military medicine. Uh, I joined the company about six years ago. Um, as the VP Clinical and Regulation, and uh, BioBit has developed an advanced remote patient monitoring platform, uh, and by using a single uh, device, which is non-invasive, wearable, wireless, we can uh, uh, automatically collect and measure 13 different parameters. Uh, everything that is collected is transmitted to a management platform, and healthcare providers can get the data, and uh, this uh, can help with their uh, with the care they provide to their patients. Um, some of the devices are disposable for shorter monitoring, and some of them are rechargeable and uh, are aimed at long-term monitoring. Now, it's my understanding that BioBeats wrist and chest monitoring, they're the first and the only FDA cleared cuffless remote patient monitoring solutions uh, to screen blood pressure. Explain exactly how they work, if you would. So the technology is uh, based on photoplatysmography. This is an optical method that uh, I guess most uh, are familiar with from uh, the pulse oximeters uh, that are being used uh, um, in many, many places. Uh, our own device was developed in-house, both the sensor and the algorithm, and this actually allows us to capture a very, very clean and robust signal, and uh, so this allows us not only to see the pulse and the blood oxygen saturation, but we can also measure other parameters, including the blood pressure. Aside from being the, the first and only FDA cleared cuffless uh, RPM, how does BioBeats devices differentiate themselves from other devices that are on the market as well? So very important to mention that this is a medical grade device. So it's not a, uh, a, um, a wellness device, but we do have to comply with rigorous regulatory demands. So we conducted uh, several clinical studies uh, for validation to show how accurate the measurements are and valid. Um, As I mentioned before, a single device provides 13 different parameters. This is another differentiator. So you don't have to use multiple devices. Everything originates from a single sensor. Um, We also provide a calculated early warning score that could help healthcare providers to be aware of a high risk of a patient to deteriorate. Um, The fact that the devices could be used both in a hospital environment and in home environment, this is also very, very important. And um, the fact that everything was developed in-house gives us a lot of uh, um, a a lot of uh, flexibility. I think that these are the main differentiators of the company. As far as the remote uh, operation, is this something that operates worldwide? Is it uh, internet-based? Is it transmitter-based? Does it have to be, the information have to be uploaded, downloaded? Uh, What are some of the challenges that are met with this device? So from the moment Vibit was established, it was uh, uh, decided that the solution is um, Mm cloud-based. And as such, um, the data is uh, uploaded or transmitted automatically from the sensors to our cloud-based system. 
Uh, it could be transmitted through either uh, um, mobile apps or through a gateway that is um, deployed in, uh, in healthcare facilities. And so basically the patient could be anywhere around the globe and the same with a healthcare provider and still you get the data in real time. Uh, we had an, an, you know, kind of an exciting experience recently with the uh, Ukrainian um, casualties and the uh, patients um, that were monitored uh, in the Ukraine while Israeli physicians looked at the data and provided their expert support to local physicians. Mm. So this really opens the boundaries and geographies, no limitations anymore, and uh, it really helps to provide care to all. That's our mission. Has the testing of this device been exclusively uh, military? You did mention that you were uh, involved in military medicine. Is Was that one of the reasons that uh, the testing, some of this testing took place during the Ukraine conflict? Uh, no, no, not really. Uh, I mean, you know, most Israelis have uh, some kind of military background, mm-hmm. uh, but, but the company uh, is focusing on civilian care, on monitoring of patients wherever they are. And and actually the monitoring of the Ukrainian patients was not part of a, a, a validation a study or test. This was a fully operational, just like we are deploying our devices anywhere else across the world. How many clinicians or, or medical centers are currently using BioBeast devices? And with that, what's an estimate of uh, the patients that have already benefited from it thus far? So there were thousands of patients monitored using our platform so far. Um, it was introduced early during the COVID pandemic. Uh, in Israel alone, uh, most of the medical centers were using it in the isolation units, um, but uh, there are more than 20 countries across the world using the devices, uh, several hundreds of healthcare professionals, both physicians and nurses, and uh, happily we get a lot of uh, positive feedbacks on reducing the burden. Nurses don't have to collect measurements anymore. Everything is automatically collected and transmitted. The data is strong, valid, diverse, and it gives you a lot of insights on the clinical condition of the patient. What's next for BioB? What are the next steps? So we are working hard now to um, penetrate the U.S. market. We are now opening our U.S. offices. Uh, we are moving forward in parallel with several medical centers in the U.S., uh, working with several health systems. Uh, we are working uh, in parallel on uh, uh, enlarging our portfolio with several other parameters that we wish to add. Um, we are working also in the European Union. We have several uh, in, um, distributors there. And like any young company, we are still looking for more investments to allow us to do the same, but faster and on a larger scale. Give our listeners a website where we can learn more. So you are more than welcome to look at www.bio-beats.com. It's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning. Lots of great information. Hopefully you'll come back and uh, inform us about BioBeats progress with this device and other devices. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Professor Eric Eisencraft. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at Anchor, Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.